Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to Project Cars 2, and welcome to, this is Silverstone Classic, and we're in the BMW M6 GT3. So it's been a while since we have spent any time in Project Cars, and we're just going to do a few laps uh, mid-race, a few night laps, because I think this game really, I think it really shines at night, and it may not be the most realistic race sim, but I think it's got to be up there for the most immersive race sim. Uh, it really is, like the way the graphics and everything just come together, I think it really is an amazingly immersive game. And it's not a bad race sim, I mean there's certainly nothing wrong with it. Uh, it just may not be as realistic as other sims, but it's certainly, you know, if this was the only thing you had to get your race on, I, I don't think you'd be looking at this like, oh, you know, this is... This is terrible. It's just different. It's different than some other race sims. And something else that I noticed when I switch back and forth between race sims is how different they all play. And as far as the force feedback and the physics and everything, like how different, I'm trying to give that guy room, how different they all play. And it takes a minute to switch back and forth from sim to sim. Uh, and I've done my best to get my get my settings, my wheel settings, and my force feedback and everything, get it all configured so that they all feel the same, and I just haven't been able to do it. Try as I may, I have not been able to do it. But that's, ah, uh, yeah, no, no traction control and no ABS, so you might be able to hear the tires just howling and squealing, but to me, that's that adds a, an extra challenge to the game and really makes it more fun, you know, I think. I think that's the awesome thing about these sims is you can just almost torture yourself with how hard you can make it. Yeah, there's some decent passing going on. It's it's going to get a little bit darker. I mean, we still have the horizon line right now, and that gives you some reference, but another lap or two, and it will get just black. And that is, I think... Maybe not my favorite time to race. I think my favorite time to race is right around dawn. But this is definitely uh, definitely up there. I, I really like night racing and, and like absolute pitch black. Ah, pitch black racing. Yeah, man, this is uh, BMW. That's the, that's the Z4 in front of us. Or that's the 911. I can't tell sometimes. I know I know both the, the Z4 and the 911 sport that massive wing. Okay, so on the right, that is the 911. On the left, that's the Z4. Yeah. Fenders give it away. Sorry, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long, tiring day. But tomorrow is... Today's Saturday. Tomorrow is... is <laughs> today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Yes, of course it is. Tomorrow, Sunday, is the day that I always try to post a race vid. So I'm going to throw this up. It'll just be a few minutes, but I thought it'd be nice to do a little Project Cars. It's been a while. It's been a long time since we've done this. And it's funny because this was the first sim, the first race sim that I had on the channel back when I thought this was as good as it got. Uh, I, was, I was all into Project Cars 2, and I owned a set of Corsa, but I really didn't use it because the first couple times I threw it in, I wasn't too impressed with the graphics, and I went ahead and, and uh, I didn't uninstall it or anything. I just rarely played it. I spent a lot of time in Project Cars 2. And now it's it's fully flipped, and I spend most of my time in uh, R Factor and a set of Corsa, and, uh, and I'm getting into iRacing, but iRacing's tricky, man. It's, uh, I really don't want to spend $1,300 on a racing sim. But I feel like the way that game is configured, every week, you need to spend another 75 bucks if you want to keep racing. And you only need to do that until you've spent $1,300, and then you're sort of in the clear. But until you own at least all the tracks, I mean, you can pick a series and you only need your car that you want to drive, plus every other car in that series. So call that 75 bucks, and then every week you have to buy a track. So... I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a good business model, and I, I know we're in Project Cars too, and I'm talking about iRacing, but 
whatever, man. It's a race sim. It's a race sim. So, um, so I know that that business model seems a little bit like, oh, uh, you know, you're kind of beating me up here. But then I've heard other people say, no, no, they're not beating you up. It's an extraordinary product, and you only buy the parts of it that you want. Like, if you just want to raise oval, you just race oval. You don't have to buy or own any road cars. Okay, so from that perspective, it makes sense. So whatever series you want to be in, like I said, once you buy the car that you want to drive plus the other cars for that series, then every week you might need to buy a track. But after seven or eight weeks, 10 or 12 weeks, you own all the tracks and then you're good for the year. So when I say $1,300, it's not a full $1,300. It could be if you bought every single thing, but it doesn't have to be. So anyway, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there because this is not iRacing. This is your dang old uh, Project Cars 2. And I think the end of this lap, we'll call it. This was, I want to say, a 15-lap race, and I finished, like, 8th, maybe? 7th? I don't know. But, anyway. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Project Cars 2 from Silverstone Classic. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.